Just put your little hand in mine. There ain't no hill or mountain we can climb. Babe. Okay, campers, rise and shine. And don't forget your booties because it's cold out there. It's cold out there every day. That's right. We today are filming the filming locations of Groundhog Day, the great Bill Murray, Andy McDowell, and Chris Elliott movie. It was filmed right here in Woodstock, Illinois, not Punxsutawney, PA, like they say in the movie. And recently, if you saw the Super Bowl commercials, they just came back to this house and filmed that commercial with Bill Murray here. So these with Jordan the Lion and Groundhog Day begin now. No jaw today. Here's our co-star. So right here's the angle we get when the news van is first entering into Punxsutawney. Comes right up this road, and then makes the turn going right up here and around the circle. So then we see the news van coming around this corner over to what they call the Pennsylvanian right here. The van pulls up right out front and everyone gets out and Phil makes his classic comment. Rita, I'm not staying here. This place is a flea bag. I stayed here a few years ago. She says, I got you a very nice bed and breakfast over on Cherry Street. It's a sign of a good producer. Keep the talent happy. <laughs> then Chris Elliott says, did he really refer to himself as the talent? And yes, my friends, that is the exact same model clock from the movie. Now, first things first. They did not film the movie inside the cherry tree bed and breakfast. They did use it for the outside, but what they did was they recreated and changed around a little bit of the layout. So a lot of the rooms that you see in the movie were depicted from this house. So I'm going to show you those. This was my bedroom. This is the view that Phil gets out his window to see the townspeople starting Groundhog Day. Does that look familiar to you? So to show you a little how different it was from the movie, my bathroom's over here, the windows looking outside are right there. And then you know when Phil goes to take his bath, he's out in that room where all the doors are and everything. You can see how that similar to here. And the stairwell that he would have came down when he runs into the guy saying, you have to see the groundhog today? And as we come downstairs, you can see this is mimicking the staircase that they have in the movie. He comes down for breakfast and then he goes in and she starts asking him about the weather inside this community room in here. And what's neat is this newspaper article is in the movie that he passes by when he's going out the front door as well as in the new commercial. Now the Cherry Tree Bed and Breakfast is owned by some mega fans, so they have some pretty cool memorabilia here. One is this photo album from the making of the movie in 1991. See here's the Groundhog Day parking pass and the advertisement they were coming to town. And then some of the photos of Gobbler's Knob. And here's Bill Murray with some local kids. And then here they have a little memorabilia case which is great because they loaned me that clock we used for the intro. That urn right there, that coffee urn, that's the one that Bill Murray is drinking out of in the diner when he's having that moment of gluttony, eating all the cakes and everything, and he's telling her, I don't worry about anything anymore. Cholesterol love handles, I don't even have to floss. And he picks up that urn and drinks directly out of it. That's the one, same exact one. And Ned Ryerson, Stephen Tobolowski has come to town for the Groundhog Day Festival and stayed in this bed and breakfast where I'm at. Now this is an interesting room because it looks like a dining room because that's what it is here. But what they did was they recreated this room for the movie and they put the fireplace over here and then if you turn it around Bill Murray would have had his chair right there and they would have had a TV there and that's where he's watching Jeopardy <laughs> he's saying what is Mexico and then he turns around and looks at the bed and breakfast lady and he says with that very creepy look on his face what is the Roan so now we get to do one of my favorite scenes in all the movie and I have a little surprise for you so we see Phil walking around this corner. That Swiss made bakery sign was in the background. And you see as he comes around here, this is where the homeless guy is standing and he reaches in his pocket stack like he's gonna give him some money. Then all of a sudden he hears someone yell. Phil? Phil Connors? I thought that was you. Don't tell me you don't 
don't remember me because I sure as heck fire remember you. It's Ned Ryerson. That's right. It's me, Ned Ryerson. Now don't tell me you don't remember me because I sure as heck fire remember you. Remember Ned Ryerson? I did the whistling belly button trick at the high school talent show. Bing! Got the shingles real bad, almost didn't graduate. Bing again. I dated your sister Mary Pat a couple of times till you told me not to. You know, Phil, I'm in the insurance business. Do you have insurance? Because if you do, you can always use a little bit more. Am I right or am I right or am I right? Am I right? Right. Right. So Ned chases Phil all the way down this sidewalk and Phil is noticeably uncomfortable and Ned says, what are you doing for dinner? Uh, something else. So then Phil goes across the street, steps in a puddle that used to be right there and Ned says, <laughs> better watch that first step, it's a doozy. Here the town actually put a plaque to commemorate that moment and what they did was they extended the sidewalk so it really would have been right there and they were telling me that during filming the city had to come out and remove the cobblestone you can still see here would remove the cobblestone every day and they would fill it with ice water and then bill murray would have a couple of pairs of socks a bag some other socks things like that on his feet and then when he stepped in his feet wouldn't get wet but they said they got wet anyway so they had someone whose job it was to blow dry his feet in between takes so this is where phil is entering gobbler's knob and he's shaking all the water off his pant leg and he goes walking along this sidewalk up around the gazebo over here and works his way over to where larry and rita are waiting so right over here is where gobbler's knob was all set up and this is where phil comes over and rita's telling him you're missing out on all the fun these people have been partying all night singing songs they go in get warm and they come back out and do it again he says yeah rita they're hicks then he starts describing he's like every year it's the same thing come out here rap on the little door pull them out we see if we have winter or spring phil relives this multiple times but in the first time that's when he says you know this is one of the few times that the news truly fails to capture the excitement of a large squirrel predicting the weather. Somewhere amongst all this snow, there is a plaque telling this was Gobbler's Knob. Okay, so you can see the walkway stairwell back there that everyone always enters through. Phil is sitting here after they get redirected when the storm front comes in that he doesn't think is coming in. He's sitting here and Rita asks him if he's gonna go to the Groundhog Day dinner and dance and everything and he says, no, I had Groundhog for lunch, it tastes like chicken. And then Larry walks in, Chris Elliott walks in over here, and as he's standing there, Phil makes a comment about him dressed like a Girl Scout. <laughs> now you can see they put a plaque here as well. But we also see, this is the scene, of course, where Phil's trying to woo her and they're gonna have their drink together and she says what should we drink to and he says the groundhog and she says oh i always drink the world peace so then every time after that he always wants to drink the world peace it's changed a little bit they've remodeled a little bit of the wood they don't have that swirly stuff in there anymore but everything else in the bar pretty much looks identical just put your little hand in mine there ain't no hill or mountain we can climb. So here's the front door that once Phil wakes up the second Groundhog Day in a row and he's worried he comes rushing down these stairs. So Phil comes rushing out here and sees the woman who would later teach him piano walking right over here and he says, excuse me, where's everyone going? And she says, Gobbler's Knob. It's Groundhog Day. It's still just once a year, isn't it? They even have a plaque here, and they have them all over town for all the various locations. We get multiple shots of this in the movie. Phil? Is that you? This is where Phil grabs him and pushes off, and he almost hits this pole right here when he's coming. So again, Ned yells the, it's a doozy when Phil steps in the puddle, but they're right in front of what was the Tip Top Cafe. So let's go in and do some of the scenes that are filmed in there. So right here at this table, Phil has his back to the window and this is where he's talking about how he's reliving the same day every day. And she's saying, Phil, I think you need your head examined. 
And this is also where he has the moment of gluttony where he's eating all those cakes and everything. And he's saying, you know, I don't worry about anything anymore. She says, it's nice to see someone throw caution to the wind, but I mean, come on. He picks up that coffee urn and drinks it. That's right there. And the two guys that he ends up meeting at the bowling alley are sitting right there. Phil, like the groundhog Phil, and Nancy is sitting right over in that table over there. So Phil eventually gets up after he's talking to Rita one of those times, goes over and starts asking Nancy, what high school did you go to? Who was your teacher? And starts finding out everything so he can eventually woo her. So now we're back on Ned's corner for another Ned Ryerson scene. Phil? Is that you? Ned? That's when he punches Ned out. So here's the bowling alley. This is Wayne's Lanes. Unfortunately, it's only open four days a week and today is not one of them. But this is where Phil is coming to terms with the fact that he's gonna have all these Groundhog Days. And he's in here drinking and he's talking to those guys from the diner and he says, I was in the Virgin Islands once. I met a woman there. We drank pina coladas and made love like sea otters until the morning. Why couldn't I relive that day over and over and over? And then he realizes that if he never has a tomorrow, there's no consequences. So they come out of this bowling alley and Phil helps the two guys out here. They're pretty drunk. And he, yeah, the car is parked right here and one of the guys Phil says, do you want to throw up here or inside the car? And he says, uh, both. So as you see him try and get into the car, he, uh, the guy that Phil is helping out kind of stumbles past this window right here. There were bowling trophies in the window in the movie, but they uh, eventually end up getting into the car that is parked right here and the guy who's in the driver's seat ends up going backwards and then forwards and says, maybe I shouldn't drive. So Phil ends up getting in the driver's seat and that's when he takes off through town, just destroying everything in town and bringing the police on a wild goose chase uh, over the railroad tracks and all that stuff. And unfortunately we can't get in here because I was told that this place has not changed one bit. It is still laid out exactly the same, same bar counter, same, uh, bowling alley lanes and there's even a plaque here check this out right here on this banner you can actually see the scene that they're having in here and then just over here they have the plaque for being a groundhog day filming location so as they leave the bowling alley and phil takes off the first thing he does is he curbs this and knocks over the trash can that's here and takes off up through there and that's where the police start chasing him around the town square here. Just put your little hand in mine. So here's where Phil pulls his move as he's coming along here, right here at the edge of the gazebo. Nancy, Nancy Taylor, Mrs. Walsh's English class. I thought that was you. She looks all confused and he said, Phil Connors. Uh, he goes, I, I was shorter, I've sprouted. And they start talking, he's like, God, I've missed you. I'm a reporter for Channel 9 in Pittsburgh. Oh, wow, I should have known. He goes, can we hang out after? Stay right here? Promise me you won't leave. Stay right here, right here. You can see that building in the background over there. She's standing right here. Nice homage here in town. So now we have the scene of a gust of wind, dog barks, cue the truck. So right here's where Phil is sitting when he decides he's gonna steal the money out of the armored truck. He's sitting there and you see him go, all right, fix your bra there, honey. Then you see Doris walking across here and you say, hello, Felix, hello, Doris. Then Phil gets up and starts walking and goes 10, 9, 8, 7, car, spill the quarters, two guys bend down to pick him up, Phil goes in, grabs the money out of the armored truck right here and walks off. Then the two armored guard guys scratch their head 
So this is the Woodstock Theater, but in the movie this is the Alpine Theater, and once Phil has stolen the money, he comes pulling up in a Mercedes right here, comes out dressed up like a Western hero, and has a date dressed as a maid, and he comes walking out, and she said, Phil, I thought you said we were going to a costume party. He said, I told you to call me Bronco. He said, I told you, I love this movie, I've seen it a hundred times, and they go up Right there in the center two doors was actually where the ticket booth was in the movie. And he says, one adult and one, uh, two adults. And then Nancy, who he had the affair with, <laughs> walks by and looks at him. And he goes, ah, old fling. And take a look, they even have a plaque here for Groundhog Day being filmed here. And in a pure touch of class, they even have in one of the poster advertisements, the original Groundhog Day poster here. Of course, the gazebo has a plaque for when, well, when our next scene happens. Phil spends day after day after day learning about Rita, trying to find out what she likes in order to woo her. He finally gets his first dance with her here. They're up here dancing in this gazebo. You can see the Opera House building on the opposite side of them as they dance. I think we should get up here and twirl around like Bill Murray and Andy McDowell were. This is where they were dancing, right here. So, see what it's like to twirl around and smooch. And the camera was right out here. So, we're back out here at the house, and this is the scene where. They've just been dancing and they're walking along this and she starts laughing and says, I'm amazed, you know, how you can start one day thinking one way and then end it by thinking completely differently. And uh, he says, well, are you happy with the way this day is turning out? And she said, yeah, it's a perfect day. You couldn't plan a day like this. And he said, well, you could, but take an awful lot of work and then they stop right up here and he says come on in I want to show you just this one thing and she says I don't think I should he said I don't think you should either that's why I'm gonna just show you this one thing and throw you right out so right here is where Phil and Rita are making the snowman and they're talking about life and this is where he's saying oh i want to have a lot of kids i want to adopt kids i want to all kinds of kids and all of a sudden the kids start a snowball fight from over here because you can see this monument in the background the kids are throwing snowballs from this site over here and phil and rita are taking cover and you can see that bench in the background as well that's where they fall down on the ground and he inches closer to her, kind of awkwardly trying to move in for a kiss. Here's one of the many places that Phil gets slapped in his attempt to win over Rita. I also see Phil get slapped right here by Rita when he's holding the door open for her at her hotel. Just put your little hand in mine. Now we're back over here at Gobbler's Knob and this is where Phil goes. Here we are in a tiny town in western Pennsylvania. What are we doing here? You know, they used to reach in, pull that thing out, roast it, and eat it. You're hypocrites. All of you. What's the matter, princess? You don't like what I'm saying? That's when he gets in her face and goes, it is cold, it's going to be gray, and it's going to last you the rest of your life. Then our next scene is back here at Gobbler's Knob again and Phil has come to a conclusion. There's no way this winter's ever gonna end. Not the way I see it. Not as long as this groundhog keeps seeing his shadow. He's gotta be stopped. I've gotta stop him. That's when Larry says, he's out of his gourd. So right over here is where the news van is parked and Phil has decided enough's enough. And he starts walking towards us and that's when he walks to the truck where they've just put the groundhog in his cage in the front seat. They had the truck parked right there. Phil hops in, 
steals the groundhog and starts going that way. And then you see the camera show the police officer getting into his car right there and they chase Phil down the street. So Phil is on his chase with the groundhog in the truck and they go through this. Now this right here is not a movie location. This is the commercial location. This is where Phil steals the truck in the commercial and his brother Brian Doyle Murray is right there yelling at him. Now we're back over at the Pennsylvanian, actually in reality the opera house here. And Phil has decided to end it all for himself once again. This time you can tell that they had built a ledge up there that he's standing on, but Phil is standing up there and decides to jump off. The next time we see this, Phil is here and this is where he's telling Rita that he's, well, he thinks he's a god and she says, you think you're God? And he goes, I didn't say the God, I said a God. At least I don't think so. So he starts telling her how he knows everything that's gonna happen and he stands up and starts walking around the restaurant and pointing out everyone and saying, this person does this and this is this person and everything and he walks over and he goes over to Nancy and says, and Nancy, she makes sounds like a chipmunk when she gets really excited. Then they had tables that were right here and right across from the bathrooms they sit down would have been a little further over here but they're sitting across from there and that's when he's saying Larry's gonna come in here in a little bit and try and take you away from me but you can't let him and Phil starts writing down on the note that it says uh, we better get going if we're gonna stay ahead of the weather and we see Larry come in this door over here he walks past the cash register and then he says we better get going if we're gonna stay ahead of the weather and as we walk out they have a tip-top cafe plaque as well for the movie so after they leave the diner and Rita now kind of believes that Phil has something weird going on, they start walking down here and that's when Rita says, I don't know, maybe you are. I mean, how else can you explain it? And he says, there is no other way. I'm not that smart. She says, well, maybe I should spend the rest of the day with you just to observe. So now, instead of being a jerk through the whole movie, Phil wants to be a good guy. So here we are again, Phil's coming around the corner, he sees the homeless man. This time he stops, reaches in his pocket, and instead of pulling out nothing, pulls out a wad of cash, thinks about how much to give him, then just gives him the whole bunch. So the house right here is where Bill Murray comes to ask the piano teacher if he can take lessons. She says, well, I'm kind of booked up today, maybe come see me tomorrow, and of course he doesn't have it tomorrow, so he says, well, I'd kind of like to get started now. How about a thousand dollars? She throws out the student and he goes in there and starts taking lessons and right on the other side of that mirror is where he's taking them and he's blowing bubbles while he's learning. They have a plaque up there as well. So here we have some more Ned Ryerson moments. This is where Ned runs up and says Phil and Phil gives him a very, very uncomfortable hug. Says, I've missed you so, so much. I don't know where you're going today, but can you cancel it? Uh, <laughs> I gotta get going. Nice to see you again, Phil. Now right here is where Phil sees the old man, the homeless guy that he avoids most of the movie. He sees him having a bit of a heart attack, leaning up against this wall right here. That's when he takes him to the hospital and the guy dies, so... Phil makes it a point to try and make the guy's life better. And you can see they even have a plaque for that because they had one other scene over here. So right here's the other moment that happens here in the movie with the old man. Phil has just bought him lunch at the diner, the soup and the turkey meal, and he's trying to uh, change the guy's day. You know, basically he knows in one of his groundhog days that the guy dies, so he's trying to change that. And right here in this white spot is where Phil is trying to save his life. Come on, Dad, breathe, breathe. And he's pumping his chest and he passes away here regardless. So it's right here that the car full of older women are driving along and they get the flat tire. And Phil pops out and starts changing their flat for him. 
the women inside the car go, he must be from the motor club. Incidentally, they're also later on at the dance and one of them purchases Larry. Now here's the sidewalk that Bill Murray is walking down and it's actually right in front of the piano teacher's house. They don't tell you that, but that's where it's at. And all of a sudden you see him look at his watch and he starts running like a madman towards us, puts his arms out and the kid falls from this tree right into his arms. And he says, you little brat, you've never thanked me for that. See you tomorrow, maybe. Now we also see this scene again when Nancy's sitting in here and Larry's telling her about, uh, you know, a lot of people think it's just holding a camera. There's a heck of a lot more to it than that. You ever seen the inside of a van and she gets uncomfortable and they start walking this way? Now for this scene, they kind of fake a little bit because they make you believe that this takes place inside the Pennsylvanian, but it actually takes place here in the local moose. So even though you have to be a member to come into a moose, they were nice enough to let me in. So this is where Phil is performing on stage. How cool is that? <laughs> That's a great scene. That's when his piano teacher that he had hired is standing out here with Rita and she says, he's my student, you know. This is where all the bidders are when Phil is up for auction. And it's also once Rita gets Phil, then they look for another person to um, auction off. And Larry, played by Chris Elliott, who I'm a huge fan of, runs up there and does his little twirl move and he's hoping that uh, Nancy is gonna bid on him, but she doesn't. And one of the older women here bids 25 cents and wins. I got him! It's just fun to look at this because the opening shot for this scene is kind of from above here. So all you can see is the dance floor and that's the exact same dance floor that we see everyone dancing on, including Phil and Rita. His last, this is his last Groundhog Day actually, right here in this room. And then here you can see there's a plaque stating this was also a filming location for Groundhog Day. So it's right over in here that Phil is making the ice sculpture of Rita. And she's just taken aback by how great it is and he says, I know your face so well I could have done it from memory. So six o'clock rolls over again, Phil wakes up, it's the same song, but Rita reaches over and says, it's too early. Then Phil runs over to the window, looks out, sees all the snow and no people, and he says, they're gone, they're all gone. Do you know what today is? Today's tomorrow. So at the end of the movie, Phil and Rita walk out the door, look around, Phil says it's so beautiful. Then they come running down the stairs, and at the foot of the stairs, Phil looks at Rita and says, let's live here. And they kiss and then he says, let's rent to start. And then they end the movie by running down here with, what a day it has been, what a rare mood I'm in. Why it's almost like being in love. He picks her up, puts her over the fence and they go running off down the street together. So do you want to tell who you are and how I know you since you're the Ned Ryerson for this video? Sure, my name is George Marecki. I own the Cherry Tree Inn. That's right, you, you own the bed and breakfast that Bill Murray stays in the movie. And the gentleman next to you is the head of the Groundhog Day Committee here. Rick Belair uh, chairman of Woodstock Groundhog Days, yes. It's amazing what you guys have done here. Thank you so much for keeping the movie alive and keeping Groundhog Day a wonderful day to celebrate. It's so much fun every year. So now that we've finished the filming locations, they just had the Groundhog Day Festival out here when I'm filming this. And during that, at the public library, they had some of the actual props and things on display. So they've arranged for me to get to see some of those before they put them all away. So take a look at all this. This is really great. Right here you have one of the trash bins. You see those quite a bit when Phil's racing the car around town when he's out with the guys drinking and leaving the bowling alley. Here's a signed photo. Thanks, Phil and Bill. <laughs> and then that's signed by Harold Ramis on Groundhog Day Stationery. That little letter. Now the Tip Top Cafe was not actually a working cafe. When they came to town, they turned it into one. 
but that's one of the menus, actual menu that they would have used for the filming. There's a signed script. And then you see while they were in town, Bill Murray enjoyed a little charity softball game and they have his jersey right here from that photo. Now, after Phil steps in the water puddle and he comes over to Gobbler's Knob, this is above his head on those entry archways. And then this flag was also hanging in Gobbler's Knob during the festival. Cool little artifact display case here. And this plate right here was one of the plates that was hanging on the wall in the Tip Top Cafe. Well, we're gonna end it over here at this amazing mural. They have a mural to Dick Tracy and Orson Welles, Groundhog Day, all those famous things that came out of this town. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Bing! Again! We'll see you all next time when it's not 6 a.m. and it's not Groundhog Day. Goodbye!